Hi, David Hoyles, GH Hoyles, Long Sutton, farming around the wash. Behind me we've got the reservoir um, that we use for storing abstracted water. The drains around this area are mainly saline, we're a couple of metres below sea level and there's only certain times where the ditch water is good enough quality for us to abstract. So we put that water in the reservoir during the winter mainly and then we use it in the spring and summer when needed. As a, as a farmer run group, uh, we're always interested in our crop productivity. For where we are on the Siltland soils, not just for David, for, but for others in the area as well, um, water is a scarce resource and we have to make best use of it. A lot of our growers around here have um, brackish water in their drains. So the water is there, but sometimes it, its salt content is too high. So we were interested in using that water, but we weren't quite sure how far we could take the salinity. So we were looking for the tipping point to look at what water we could use and, and, and what, what level of salinity. And some growers will, you know, maybe on the back of this, will think harder about the water they've got in their drains. So is that suitable to do a job for them in the future? They will still have to put the infrastructure in then, of course, to take it from the drain to irrigate. For the purpose of the trial, we had to purchase IBC containers and the fittings to go into the, the banjo couplings. And basically the Honda pumps are pumping about 30 cube an hour. Um, just trials equipment really, but this was, this was what we needed just to facilitate the trial. So we've, got, we've had three pumps, three IBCs and three lots of pipe work, which have all coupled up into our pretty standard uh, valves and header main equipment. So downstream from the Honda pump, we come to our control valve. So you, you've got your pressure gauge there. The, the, always the pipe and the, 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 uh, the header main and the lay flat pipe are running around one bar pressure. Water comes through the pipe into the header main. Again, standard equipment. All of this from, from here, downstream from the pump, is all standard field equipment. So water into the header main through the plastic couplings and in, into the, connected onto the drip tape. This is a standard drip tape about 1.25 litres per metre an hour. Um, the pipe is then buried in the top of the potato row or the, or the onion row and then into the ground. And you can just start to see this has now been running for about three hours and the water's, the water's uh, marking the ridge up and inside the ridge that will be making a lovely job of, uh, of penetrating the ridge and wetting up the crop. I'm Ian Gould, soil scientist at the University of Lincoln. At the trial site we have five treatments. Those are three different types of salinity, the first of which is from the irrigation reservoir and that's coming in at 950 ppm which is our unit we're using for salinity. Our next level of salinity is almost well, more than double that, it's 2000 ppm and we're going even higher at 4000 ppm. We have two further treatments, one of which is no irrigation and the other one is using overhead irrigation from the reservoir. The problem with salts or salinity in the soil is, is twofold really. The first issue is the chloride levels and that can really impact on the crop. So as part of this project, the agronomist is going to be measuring crop yields and looking at how the crops have been impacted on under our different salinity treatments. The second problem with salinity in soils is the impact of sodium on the soil itself. Sodium can be really damaging to soil structure and it can also have an impact on the soil biological community. So throughout the trial at different time periods we're measuring salinity in the topsoil but also in the subsoil. We're measuring it by looking at the, so the levels of sodium in those, in those areas. Um, we're also taking other soil measurements so structural properties like aggregate stability and, and we're also going to take some compaction readings at the end and that will give us an indication of if there's any physical damage to the soil and also we're measuring soil respiration which gives us an indication of the biological activity in the soil. My name's Tim Blythe, I'm a director at Soil Moisture Sense and for this project we've been using the Centec 60 centimetre drill and drop tri scan probe for monitoring moisture, temperature, and salinity. We have sensors at 10 centimetre increments all the way down the probe, and it's installed vertically into the soil. The probe sits flush at the soil surface, and when irrigation occurs, we'll pick up the water infiltrating through the soil from the top to the bottom. With the salinity sensors, 
in the probe, it will enable us to actually pick up the salt levels as they go increase or decrease through the profile. For David in the project, he's been using, day to day, been using the probes for scheduling purposes. So he has a repeatable point with a refill line, which enables him to dry the crop out and then wet the crop up. But hopefully with a mixture of temperature, moisture and salinity, all of those parameters will enable an informed decision to be made at the end of it as to whether the salinity had an impact on the growth of the crop. Right, so we're going to have a look at the results of the trial now. Um, do this in three parts. Firstly, we're going to look at the crop impacts, so the Maris Piper um, impacts, um, with some results done by John Keir. Then we're going to look at soils. Then we'll look at system economics. So firstly, um, horn vigor. And just as a reminder, our treatments were um, high salinity, 4,000 ppm, medium, 2,000, and low, 950 ppm. We also had an, a non-irrigated plot and a, a, a comparison with overhead irrigation, which is at 950. So horn vigor. John's analysis shows there was no real significant difference in horn vigor across those plots throughout the um, throughout the trial, um, which is 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 uh, really interesting to see that the high salinity and the low salinity are, are have the same horn vigor. What about yields? Really uh, crucial. Um, what about so we looked at uh, yields and grading? So John uh, also found here no significant differences in yields in the trial. Um, the only thing that you could comment on was that the non-irrigated plots had a slightly lower yield, but it wasn't uh, deemed to be significant. Common scab and black dot. Um, again, uh, the salinity treatments had no significant differences. Um, the only thing that did show uh, a, a difference was, our, again, our non-irrigated plot, um, which showed um, uh, high levels of scab. Um, so again, it's showing that if we if we use slightly brackish uh, irrigation, we, we haven't had an impact um, to the levels that we, we were using it at. Um, skin brightness, um, again, uh, salinity, no significant differences in our uh, saline drip uh, treatments. What we did have again was the no irrigation having the, the lower um, level of brightness scale on the brightness scale. And that's our crop impact. So uh, we know uh, what we can what we can grow with the brackish uh, irrigation. What is crucial is, is there any soil legacy? Is there any soil damage? So let's have a look at that now. Um, first thing we're going to do is we're going to um, look or discuss uh, the sodium levels in the soil. We're using um, a lot of ways to look at salinity in soils. We, we're looking at exchangeable sodium percentage here, which is the amount of sodium that can that can um, stick to cation sites in the soil. So before irrigation, in May, just before we started the trial, um, uh, we took these samples in the topsoil and the subsoil, very low levels. Um, actually, uh, they were below the detectable limit, which is at one. So all treatments, very low. Um, let's see what happens when we start irrigating in July. Um, we get a real spike in sodium in the soil um, in our high salinity, which might be expected. Uh, which is the blue in there. The, the low salinity is the dark green, so that's actually coming in second. But we do have that spike going into July as we start irrigating with brackish water. But as we as the trial draws to the end in August, when we've stopped irrigating, those sodium levels have, have dropped down in the topsoil and also in the subsoil as well. That's crucial. We did the same with subsoil. Dropped down in August, and then I've just gone back in uh, in March of this year. Um, and we can see that the, the levels are back to where they were at the start of the trial with all the winter rain, all the flushing. Important to also, as I said, the subsoil had the same pattern. So with the salts of flushing, where we measured them in the subsoil at 60 centimetres depth, we had that same pattern as well. So they've gone from there. Uh, we did measure some other properties in the soil, um, soil penetrometer, so looking at uh, penetration resistance and compaction. These were our results from September 2020, so just after the trial. As we did wonder, we had a slight more, slightly more compaction at depth at 40 centimetres in the higher salinity plot. And then in the measurements we made again in March, we also have this higher level of compaction at depth in the higher salinity plots. Now, we can't say if that's because of the sodium, which has been flushed out at, the, at this depth, or if it's just because of that, where that plot was in the field. It was at one of the edges of the field, so it might be that. So we can't really determine if that's a saline effect or not. But we do have, we, we need to flag it and we, we will make comment on that. 
Um, and again, we looked at sort of structures. This is a vest in March. Um, I would say the just marginally better structure uh, by by eye is coming from our lower salinity plots. But again, it might be because of where it was in the field. And just out of interest, we we looked at soil respiration. So how much sort of microbial life is in there respiring, releasing CO2. Um, no significant differences across, but it, it is quite interesting to see how the, the drip irrigation plots, which are the three, um, uh, two, two shades of green and the blue plot, are slightly higher than our overhead irrigation, but not significant. But just interesting to we have results on these. And finally, system economics. Um, this is some um, uh, from conversations with Andrew Hausman and David Hoyles. Um, irrigate, drip irrigation in the area is working at around six hundred pounds per acre to install all the infrastructure, including a reservoir on site. This is in the, the silt soils of South Lincolnshire. An overhead equivalent might be roughly the same um, in terms of cost, but it wasn't a very dry year. And we wonder that in a drier year, in a drier summer, that drip irrigation would be more cost effective. Thank you very much for listening. Um, and here are my contact details um, if you have any questions. Thank you.